Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're going to talk about the Elna Experience 560. In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the parts of the machine. So over here on the right-hand side, we have where you plug in your power and your foot control, and we have the on-off switch right here. On this side here, we have the stitch charts. We have two of them. This goes from 00 to 49. This one goes from 50 to 99. And it has numbers here that you would use the buttons for to find those stitches. When you first turn on your machine, it's going to be at 00, which is your regular straight stitch. Okay, here we have the hand wheel. Now, when you turn the hand wheel, the needle goes down, comes back up. If you turn the hand wheel by hand, make sure you're turning it towards you or counterclockwise. Okay, here we have where you wind your bobbin right here at the top and the stopper for winding the bobbin. Here we have the spool pin with a spool of thread on it. And here is the uh, guide for winding the bobbin. Back here is the thread guide for threading your machine. And then we have other thread guides here too. Right here is your tension dial to regulate the tension for um, your thread on the top. Usually we leave it right here at four. Up here is the presser foot pressure dial. Now this one, it regulates how tightly your presser foot pushes down against the fabric. Most of the time I like to leave it right about five, which is pretty tight. If you have a sweater knit that tends to, to get all stretched out and wavy when you sew it, then you may want to have it at a lower level here. Okay, on the side here we have a thread cutter. Now this is really convenient so you can pull your fabric out. When you're done making your seam, pull your fabric out of there. Just pull the thread right around the front and it cuts the thread. Nice and convenient to have that right there. Now right here we have an ankle that's a quick change ankle. That means you push this little button and back and the presser foot drops right off. There's several presser feet that come with this machine, so it's easy to put those back on. Underneath the presser foot are the feed dogs, and that's what feeds the fabric along. They're called feed dogs. You can lower these feed dogs, like if you're gonna do free motion quilting or something like that. There's a, a, a switch in back here, so you push it to the left and see how the feed dogs dropped right down there. Now to make them come back up again, push the switch to the right, and just take one stitch. And I'll roll the hand wheel, one stitch. There you hear that little click? That is the feed dogs re-engaging. And then to put the presser foot back on, here's the presser foot lifter right here. We lower that down, it lifts, it puts it right back on again. Okay, now, also we have a needle threader with this machine, which makes it really nice for threading your needle. Um, it works really well with size 10 and up needles. I usually use the size 12, which is plenty big enough for uh, threading the needle. Behind that, you have the buttonhole lever. Now this is used with a, a special buttonhole foot that comes with your machine to make nice, perfect, perfectly sized buttonholes. And I can show you that in a different video. So we're gonna put that back up there like that. Uh, we have the needle clamp and the, um, the screw that holds in the needle right there. And of course the needle, which is the, the business end of the machine. If you take this off, this is your storage tray, your accessory tray. You have a free arm. Now this is nice and convenient if you are doing uh, the hem of jeans or pants and you want to put the hem of that pant leg right around here. It's really nice and convenient to do that. Okay, but normally we have our accessory tray on here because it gives you a little bit more support for your fabric when you're sewing. To open your accessory tray, just grab it on the side here, pull it forward, and inside here is where you would store your accessories. We'll do another video later on showing you some of the accessories on this machine. So to continue on, we have the start stop button. Now as long as the foot pedal is connected and it shows that right up here in the screen, the start stop button is not going to work. If we disconnected that, you can start and stop your machine using the start stop button instead of the pedal. It's, it's a choice up to you. Here's your reverse button. So when you push this, as long as you push and hold it, 
your machine will stitch in reverse. So that way you can get that nice back stitch at the beginning and ending of your seams. This is a locking stitch button. So when you push this and keep your foot down on the pedal, it will stitch in place and do a nice little knot and then stop. And then you take your foot off the pedal and you can take your fabric out, cut your thread, there you go. This is a needle up, needle down. So I'm gonna show you this. I'm hanging on to the threads because there's no fabric in there and I just wanna make sure the threads don't get pulled down and, and yeah. So needle down, needle up, that's how that works. This is the thread cutter button. Now when you use this, say at the end of your seam, you're done sewing, you press this button, the thread will be cut and the little tails will be pulled to the back. This is your sli speed slider. Now what this does is it governs how fast you can sew. So if you've got your foot all the way down on the pedal and it's here at medium, it'll only go, it'll kind of go medium speed. Here is really slow. So this is actually a pretty good machine to teach a child or somebody who's never sewn before because you can slow it way down and they can get plenty of control. Um, if you have it all the way up to fast, that means however, however much you push on the pedal is as fast as it will go. And of course you can push less on the pedal. It's kind of like a gas pedal in a car. The, fa the more you push it, the faster it goes. Over here we have the LCD screen, the um, informational screen. This tells you what stitch you have, what foot is recommended for that stitch, your stitch width, or in the case of a straight stitch, the needle position. The stitch length is what you have here, and these two are controlled by these buttons here. So we can move the needle over, I'll show you. Look down here, see how that needle's moving over? And we can move it back, we can move it the other way, or you can actually press and hold and it will move to the side where, whichever way you push it. You can also make your stitch longer or shorter. So you can make it really short, clear down to where it's just stitching in place. Or if you wanted to do a basting stitch, notice I can press and hold it, or I can step it along. Now right now, with these settings, stitch zero, zero is not at its default stitch. So we could just get out of that stitch and get back into that stitch and now it's back to default. The center needle position and a normal garment stitch length. These stitches, these buttons here are to, when you look over here, say I wanted to do stitch number, uh, oh this little serpentine stitch. I'd move this up to one and then I'd move this up to seven and now I have stitch number 17. There's another way to get into that, which would be, if I have zero, zero, I can go up to one and then I can go backwards to nine, eight, seven. So like if I wanted to do stitch 19, I'd just kind of go backwards a little bit. Okay, now this is a wonderful button right here because let's say I want to get right back into straight stitching. There we go, one button push, that's all you need. Same with this, if you wanted to do zigzag, instead of finding zigzag here and going 06, well just push that, there you go. Now this is gonna give you a, a sort of a default width and length of stitch, but you can make this wider, you can make this a shorter stitch, so you've got a nice wide satin stitch there, and if you wanted to go back to default, just push that again. Here we have a stitch that does a seam and an overcast. And when you push that, you have to use this F foot. That's what it recommends anyway, the F foot. And it helps because you're putting a lot of thread into the fabric. Again, in a future video, we will show you the accessories for this machine and the techniques for this machine. Over here, we have buttonhole. Now, square-ended buttonholes are really common. This is the kind of buttonhole you would normally make. You do have other options for different buttonholes, but the square end buttonhole, since it's so common, that's why it's included as a direct select button. Here we have the memory cut button. So when I turn that on, notice those little scissors appear. 
Every time you do a locking stitch or a stitch that has a locking stitch at the end of it built in like the buttonhole, at the end of that stitch, it will cut the threads for you. You don't have to push this little button here or take out your scissors or use your cutter that's included on your machine. To turn that off, you just push this button here. So that's the overview of this machine. I'm gonna put it back into default there. If you found this video to be helpful, give us a thumbs up. And if you have questions or comments, you can leave them that, in that little area down below. We have lots of other videos on different machines here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and we will have more videos on this machine as well. So stay tuned, happy sewing. Thanks for watching, bye.